Hello everyone and welcome back to the Right Turn Randy YouTube channel. Guess what? Last time we drove this thing for the test drive, it turns out that the rear carburetor is a 500 CFM. I went to look at it to get metering springs and jets and all that stuff, and it turns out it's a 1404, which is a 500 CFM carburetor. That is no good. So I went out and I got another 650 ABS-2, which is the same exact carburetor that's on the front, and we're gonna put that on the back in place of the 500 and take it for another drive. Got that new 650 ABS on there, so it should be ready to fire up. Need to fill up the bowls of the carburetor. Make sure it's not leaking out the side there. So I reset the idle mixture screws, ran them all the way in, and then backed them out about a full turn each on all four. So we'll see if it starts. Fired right up, but that's that idle's way too high. So we're gonna have to, whew. Why is that so high? Oh yeah, yeah, the rear carburetor. The idle screw on the rear carburetor is in a lot farther than the front carburetor. See that gap right there? So let me back off that mixture screw and we'll try it again, because it was idling up like 2,000 RPM. All right, I think I got the idle screws pretty even. Let's try that again. <laughs> And it's still running, that's crazy. Dang. All right, let's see if we can fix that. Probably just have to bring the idle up a little bit. It'll probably smooth it out. All right, sounds like it's running smooth as silk. I got everything. I got the mixture nailed down, I think. Idle's nailed down. It's running just under. 160, it's almost to 180. And then we got 14 to 1 on the air fuel. 13A, 13.7, something somewhere around there. Put just under 14 to 1 on the air fuel ratio. And idling at 800, 900. 60 psi fuel pressure. And the fuel, that's interesting to me that the fuel is just above 5, because last time I ran it, it was just above 6, it was almost 7 psi. So I hope I'm not having an issue with the fuel pump, but it's looking good right now. We're gonna lock it down and take it for a drive and see if anything's changed. All right, we're fired up, getting ready to go see, do some testing. It's island super lean right now. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Because I had to run it just fine in the garage, maybe because the air's cooler out here, I'm not sure. But it's up about 180 degrees. All right, so about 2,000 RPM. Just cruising, it's like 12 right now, which is really good. So we'll roll into it and see what happens. Yeah, it goes like 14.6 pretty much. Yeah, that light throttle's gone, so. Cruising at 2,000 RPM, which is where we're at now, it hovers right above 12, 13. So let's see, let's roll into it in a second and see what happens. It's at 13 now, but roll into it. Oh. 
problem I'm having right off idle, I think I can adjust with these right here. These are called, these are the metering rods right here. And as you can see, when you press down on these, they go down into the jet like that. Now, when there's vacuum underneath the carburetor, these get pulled down and they're held down. So when you go, when you go off idle and crack the throttle or when you're cruising and then you, st you stomp on it, these come up. Now what happens is, is when they're down like this in this position, they're on the thicker side of the metering rod, which will let less fuel go past them. When they're all the way up like this, as you can see all four of them out are right now, that's when there's less vacuum and the smaller part of the metering rod is in there. When the smaller part of the metering rod is in, in this position, it's allowing more fuel to flow. So as soon as you crack the throttle, you should see those metering rods come up and those are the pistons on top of the metering rods, but you should see those pistons come up and then that is allowing full fuel flow as soon as you get on the throttle. So when I start it right now, you should see those pistons go down. So I got all the carburetor parts from Summit, they came today. I've got some 101 jets, 104 jets, two sets for each carburetor. I also have springs, step up springs for each carburetor, and I'm still waiting on another set of metering rods, but these are just to keep things lean. If I richen up the power side, this is to keep things leaner on the cruise side. And then I have two high flow needle and seats. Those are recommended actually from the Edelbrock website. If you read the instruction manual for these carburetors, it says it gives you like a whole setup for a blown 350. So I kind of went pretty close to that setup, but since it's not even a built 350, it's just completely bone stock. I'm just gonna put uh, my own combination in it, but we're gonna try to do one change at a time. We're gonna start with the step up springs. I'm gonna go ahead and take out these step up springs. We got four of them. We're gonna swap, I think these are the yeah, those are the orange springs. So we're gonna swap those out for something a little bit heavier. I got one step higher instead of step up springs. They look like they do a little bit better job. So we're gonna get on the road, take it for a spin, and see if it stabilizes that transitional air fuel and richen things up enough. So if I give it a little gas, So I think I'm gonna switch it to the heaviest springs and I should probably uh, put the high flow seats in it too.
Okay, I put high flow needle and seats in it. I put uh, 101s in the secondaries instead of 98s. So I put the heaviest springs in there, the natural ones. Those are eight pound springs. I'm hoping that those are going to be able to hold the vacuum back. So I don't have that problem with it going super lean when I get on the throttle. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to figure out some way to go buy springs that are even stiffer than these, or maybe figure out a way to shim them or something like that because that I'm, I'm almost positive that that's my problem is that those springs are not allowing the uh, metering rods to go into the rich mode soon enough and it's starving the engine for fuel right off idle and right off cruise. So now that I've got the stiffest springs in, we're gonna take it for another drive and see if that's fixed my problem. If it hasn't, then I'm just gonna go richer on the primary and see if I can make up the difference that way. Let's give it a good shot at second. Car's really feeling like it drives like it should. Couple of full throttle pulls. Other than that, lean spot just off idle and just off cruise. It's not nearly as bad with those super heavy springs in it. So I might try to go up another level of spring. But aside from that, I'm really confident in the car just driving around. I don't think it's gonna be in any danger just cruising. And at full throttle, it goes all the way down to like 12 to one. So I think it's gonna be okay for the most part. Uh, <laughs> 
I just have to start beating on it and find out. You know, I gotta say, this thing doesn't start cooking until the boost comes on, but man, I tell you, nothing feels like that. Nothing feels like that when it's just, oh, this is a regular 350, and then all of a sudden the boost starts ramping up and it just pulls you back into your seat like it's great. I know this car doesn't have a lot of power right now, but from what it was before, to where it is now, I am really excited, and it is an absolute blast to drive. <clears throat> the next step is probably gonna be taking this thing to an eighth mile track to see what it'll do in the eighth mile, and then from there, it'll be the quarter. I don't wanna take it on the quarter first <laughs> rip because I don't know if it's gonna be able to sustain like full throttle for that amount of time, but we'll take it to the eighth mile, see what it does there, and then the quarter after that. But that is gonna be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're liking the videos, please subscribe and I will see you next time.